I've used this antenna on several POTA activations and featured it during my antenna shootout. It has quickly become my go-to antenna, so I figured it was time to do a full review on it. Coming up next in the House of Ham. Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob WB7W, and today I'm going to give you my thoughts on the Chelligans MC750 antenna. Now, I bought this antenna with my own money, and I have no affiliation with Chelligans or DX Engineering, and my thoughts and opinions are completely my own. This antenna is advertised to operate from 40 meters through 6 meters, hence the 750 in the name, or 7 through 50 megahertz. In this video, I'll give you what I like and what I don't about this antenna. I'll start with the good stuff. The first thing is I really like about this antenna is how neatly it packs up in this bag. I really wish more antennas came with bags that fit so perfectly. Most don't come with bags at all. The only other antenna I had that has a bag is the Alex Loop hand pack. Everything has its place in this bag and I can grab this with a piece of coax and my KX2 and I have everything I need for a pot activation. Let's take a look at the parts of this antenna system. First is the ground spike. This is a very sturdy spike with this part at the top that has the SO239 connector on the side of it, and it also has these four holes for banana plugs for the ground radials. Now the banana plugs are smaller than the ones we typically see in the US, but I bought some of these smaller ones on Amazon to make adapters for my radials that I use on my other verticals. The truth of the matter is, the radials that came with this antenna have worked so well during my activations, so I haven't really found a reason to try and use my other ones, but more on that in a bit. Next is this 20-inch section that goes between the mount and the whip. I thought that this would allow the whip to be shorter and still cover all the way down to 40 meters, but this whip is every bit as long as the chameleon whip, so who knows? This whip collapsed is only 21 inches, vice the Wolf River coil whip, which is 23 inches, or the chameleon whip, which is 24 and a half inches. Speaking of the whip, this one seems really well made and sturdy, but it has a great feature. It is laser engraved for each of the bands except for 30 meters, which is missing. More on that later, too. Now, these markings will get you right in the ballpark. Using my Rig Expert stick, I find that I typically have to adjust a few inches either up or down, but that certainly is not the fault of the antenna. The differences in the ground and the environment you are in will vary the ground effectiveness and detune the antenna a bit. Now, actually, you may find that even though the marks may be a little off from the lowest SWR, it will probably get you close enough to be workable but I like to throw the antenna analyzer on and get it as close as possible. The last piece that comes with this kit is the 40 meter coil. Now this will also work with 30 meters, but as I said, there are no marks for 30. So why don't they have a mark for 30 meters? I played with it a bit. I found that I had to make the whip pretty short for 30 meters. I'm sure it would work, but I'm not sure how effective it would be. The more you physically shorten an antenna with a loading coil, the less efficient it becomes, bringing it closer to a dummy load. I'll have to try it and see how the reverse beacon network shows this. Maybe even a whisper test is in order. Now when you're using this antenna for 20 meters and up, it is a resonant quarter wave vertical antenna. So how does this thing perform on the air? Really well, actually. Will it outperform other 17-foot whips used in the same configuration? Highly doubtful, since they're essentially the same thing. What I did find in a couple of cases where I set this up in a park along with an NFED half wave is that I got better RBN reports and more contacts. Does this mean that this will always outperform a wire antenna? Absolutely not. It just means in those particular days, in those locations I was at, it worked better. I'm sure there will be other times the wire antenna will work better. This thing sets up really quick too. It takes me less than five minutes to get it set up and tuned, which includes putting it on the analyzer and dialing it in. Changing bands takes less than a minute, also checking it on the analyzer. Now, if you hop back and forth between the bands, you will already kind of know if you need to lengthen or shorten from the marked position, so those subsequent changes should be pretty quick. Now, I also opted for the lightweight tripod, 
So if there's a place that either the ground is too hard or I'm not allowed to put a spike in the ground, I can still operate. I've yet to need this, so not sure how valuable it will be. Now, some of the things I don't like, which are mostly nitpicky kind of things, but here goes. First, since this thing is made in China, it doesn't use the standard 3 8 24 threads we use in the US for the whip and the other parts. So if you were hoping to use these parts with some other antennas, forget it. The threads on this thing are M10. The other minor annoyance is the banana plug size. These are smaller 3 millimeter plugs vice the larger ones we use in the US. Now I bought some 3 millimeter plugs on Amazon to make these adapters so I can use my radial sets that I made for some other antennas. I found that more shorter 8 foot radials get me a better results than the fewer longer ones on my Wolf River coil. That being said, I have found that the four 12-foot radials that come with this work pretty well, so I haven't even tried my 8-footers for an activation. I did some testing in the backyard, and I found that I had negligible difference for 20 and 17 meters, but the difference did get more drastic on the higher bands. The last nitpick is the price. I'm not saying this price is out of line, but it's higher than some other options, and if you're a price-conscious ham, and let's face it, many of us hams are cheapskates. There are cheaper ways to get the same result. You can get the Wolf River Coil 17-foot whip for $65 and the Sporty 40 Coil for $30. And you can make a ground spike for under $20. Add some radial wire for about $10 and you come in at about $125 or about half the cost of the Chelligan's MC750. What you won't have is this nice carry bag and the laser markings on the whip. As I stated earlier, performance-wise, I don't think you would see any difference. So you have to decide for yourself if the added cost is worth the price. For me, it was. This is an elegant and well-thought-out solution. Would I buy this again? And do I recommend it? Absolutely. Like I said, it is a very nice kit that will continue to be my go-to POTA antenna. Now, if you want to get one of these for yourself, there is a link in the description for DX Engineering, which is the U.S. distributor of Chelligan's antennas. At the time of this recording, they are currently out of stock. As I remember, I had to wait a bit to get mine too. So if you see them in stock, don't wait as they seem to go out of stock quickly. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing so you know when my next video comes out. Until next time, 73.